another big metaverse came case just came down. This time it's a Board Ape Yacht Club, which is probably one of the biggest, most successful NFT collections out there. <clears throat> that I assume if you're watching this, you probably know about them. But uh, essentially, what happened was about a year ago, I think in uh, May or so of 2022, an artist released what he claims is a pun, a you know. Uh, play on Board Ape Yacht Club and sold his own NFTs that did very well. And Yuga Labs, the creator and owner of Board Ape Yacht Clubs, sued them. And we just got a case. The case came down, the decision by the judge, it's California Central District Court, which is a federal court. Um, and the case came down, or the decision came down in favor of Yuga Labs. Now, this is a summary judgment motion. What that means is that essentially everything is done on the paper and potentially oral arguments. You're not, uh, you don't have the defendants or plaintiffs up in the stand that you might see in a movie. It's just all done on the paper with whatever evidence is available. And in this case, and when the judges look at that, they give deference to the party that did not make the motion. So they look at everything in the light most favorable to the defendants here because it was Yuga Labs attorneys that brought the summary mo judgment motion. So the key things are is that basically Yuga Labs prevailed on two of their claims, which was they received summary judgment on their first cause of action, which is false de designation of origin and cyber squatting claim. They did not, and they also denied some of the affirmative defenses that the artist put forth, which were trying to say, you know, claim fair use, that they were making a statement about it because there were some uh, Nazi and uh, underlying tones of the original Board Ape Yacht Club. So uh, they did not win on their motion for damages. So that's going to move forward to figure out how much were the damages. But at least we know that they're winning on uh, the actual false designation, the cyber squatting, which all of them are probably going to carry with them besides the damages. The court order the, the infringing NFTs probably need to be taken down somehow. So um, I don't know, you know, the technicalities of how that's going to happen is beyond uh, my ability, but let's just take a quick look at a couple of things that were, you know, in here. So for false designation, that's essentially under the Lanham Act, which is also what controls trademarks, and it's deciding whether or not people would be confused that these NFTs are coming from Yuga Labs, the original creators of them. So the court held that, yep, people would be confused here, you know, based on looking at the, the evidence, um, which is similar to there was earlier a Meta Birkins case a few weeks ago that came out that also was ruled under a trademark, which is a Lanham Act type of a case for people would be confused that the Meta Birkins came from Hermes, the maker of Birkin bags. Um, and I thought I highlighted a part there, but uh, yeah, defendant's use is likely to cause confusion. They look at the strength of the marks with the Board H Yacht Club is a strong trademark. The goods are exact same since NFTs. The marks are similar. Uh, any actual evidence of confusion, which I guess I'm surprised that they weren't able to show any, but maybe that's just because of its summary judgment, it was harder. Um, evidence that the which is surprising that they were able to get that, although you, there is discovery potentially before the summary judgment motion, so they could have gotten in discovery some uh, evidence that hurt 
the defendants to show that they did have intent on making money off of this because there would be confusion. Um, and then in terms of the cyber squatting, they RRBAYC, so you know, Board Ape Yacht Club is BAYC, and then they did apemarket.com. Uh, so when the court looked at those, you know, there's a number of factors like looking at whether there's bad faith, they look to whether or not trademark or other intellectual property rights of the defendant in the domain name, extent to which the domain name consists of the legal name of the defendant or the name that is otherwise used to identify the defendant, defendant's prior use of any of the domain name as a bona fide offering of the defendant's bona fide non-commercial or fair use of the mark and the site accessible under the domain name and you know fair use is what the defendants here were mainly claiming that the court shot down defendants intent to deliver divert consumers from the mark's owner which that's what they felt uh, defendants offered a transfer seller otherwise i don't know if there was any evidence of that that they were looking to for board ape yacht club to essentially buy the domain from them uh, defendant's provision of material and misleading false contact information when applying. Yeah, I don't know if any of that was there. It might say later on. Uh, defendant's registration of acquisition of multiple domain, domain names, which may, the defendant knows are identical or confusingly similar to marks or others that are distinctive at the time of registration of such domain names or they allude of famous marks. And extent to which the mark incorporated in the defendant's domain name registration is or is not distinct or famous. So, Board Ape Yacht Club, uh, famous is actually a, a very high bar in trademarks, but it's definitely distinctive Board Ape Yacht Club for NFTs. Um, so, that's, you know, kind of a quick rundown of the decision. I'll put the link in there to the decision in below. If you like these, sign up, uh, please subscribe to our channel. And uh, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out. Uh, Jason Roosevelt here, intellectual property attorney, and we are at jhrlegal.com. Thanks.